for this special broadcast on SABC One and our sister public radio stations. We are with President Jacob Zuma, and this is his maiden interview with us. I'm Tim Modise, and welcome. Welcome, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Tim. And uh, as I was indicating earlier, it looks like your speech well received throughout the country. A lot of goodwill coming your way. How do you feel about that? Well, um, I think we're feeling fine. I think uh, so far it, it looks like uh, people understood what we're saying. Uh, that is very good, I think. Uh, I think we're dealing with the matters as it were, uh, the matters that really relates to people at all levels. So it's, it's good that uh, people are responding the way they're doing. Now, you crisscrossed the country during the elections. You've been involved in a whole number of processes that informed uh, the speech that you gave the nation when you spoke before uh, Parliament. What are South Africans telling you? I mean, what is it that now as you sit here as president, you think are the key challenges you've got to deal with? Well, people, of course, said many things. I met uh, all sectors. I met business people. I met uh, uh, traditional leaders. I met religious leaders. I met uh, ordinary people. I met trade unions. I met communists. <clears throat> and people, all of them, were, were saying things that are not very far from each other. I think there's a good will that we need a prosperous South Africa. We need a country that succeeds. <clears throat> they might be saying it in different ways. But there was also a very huge voice coming from the poorest of the poor who are actually feeling the, the burden of poverty, the burden of challenges, uh, particularly in the rural areas. And some of them you would see as you walk into their houses that if they speak, it's not just because they are being critical. It's reality. And of course, your statistics as well would be saying there has been a growing economy. This is before the, the downturn of the financial crisis globally in South Africa for a long period. But also there's deepening poverty. Those was a reality, which to me was a contradiction. Because if the economy is growing, it ought to benefit the people of the country. Now, what was therefore clear to me was, we need to do something to address that problem. You could not allow the gap to just widen all the time. What can you do to ensure that you close the gap? I think more than many, many other things, that to me became the critical issue. Because if, if that happens, you are certainly sitting on a situation that will explode one day. So since people are talking about it, and mark you, we're finishing 15 years in democracy. And you couldn't reach 20 years and beyond when people are telling you that whatever we're doing, which is we are doing for the good of the country, but it's not doing any good for the section of the country. So you needed to adjust certain things and do certain things in order to address that issue. You also had to say, what is it that we need to do so that we are able to address that particular program, I mean, that particular problem. So in a sense, uh, everything coming together, it was clear to me what are the things that we need to do. And fortunately, the ANC had an opportunity in 2007 really to debate these issues at great length. And they were able to identify what was happening and therefore they were able to begin to say what needs to be done. Uh, leading up to the uh, conference of the ANC wherein they took very clear resolutions what needs to be done. And as we worked on the manifesto, the manifesto therefore was trying to answer uh, those kind of challenges that were emerging from the people. And we believe that once we presented the manifesto to the nation, as you know, it was supported overwhelmingly by different organizations and individuals. So clearly, what emerged from the people, I think we attempted to uh, work out what are the remedies. Now, 
It's a complex process, I would like to believe, when you put a speech like the one you did earlier this week. So what exactly happened? How did you go about structuring the speech and identifying the key objectives that you thought the nation should focus on? Not, not anything far away from what I've just said, <clears throat> because the issues were very clear, and I think it was a question of how do you present this as an intervention in the country to tell the nation what is it that the government is going to do? And mark you, this came after a process of appointing the cabinet and therefore of also establishing certain new kind of structures which also was geared to address the issues. So by the time we came to the speech, I think there was a fair knowledge of what was needed. And the government, as you know, we, we held uh, three days La Hutla wherein the issues were put on the table, which was a continuation of what the Directors General had been also doing on the basis of what was presented to them as well. So by the time you came to write the speech, you had gone through this. There had been a lot of uh, contribution, testing and checking of the, of the issues and facts. So it was a question of how do you then put this uh, to a speech that says to the nation, this is what you are going to do, that there is no issue that is left out unattended to in the speech, but also that there is a balance. <clears throat> this, I think, was more challenging because, as you know, we were now doing this not under normal circumstances. We we're doing this when the international economic meltdown was with us. So it's a question of Again, re-looking into it, given the challenges now, how far could we go with our programs? And I think there was a lot of work that went into that from my colleagues as well. Uh, and we're able, therefore, to say, certainly these are the things we believe uh, we can do. And I think it was easy, therefore, to craft that in a statement. That's President Jacob Zuma. His first ever interview following the State of the Nation address will continue this interview with him in a moment.